Give me 10 minutes and I'll share with you five things that I learned over the last five years working in information technology. Turning almost 30 now, I started working in IT five years ago and trust me, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. Burnouts, successes, failures. I've seen it all in these last five years. Therefore, I'm going to share with you a few of my lessons or learnings, some of which I learned the very hard way so that you can see what you're going to expect from this journey, which is going to include upskilling, handling rejections, failures, as well as celebrating successes. Currently, I'm working as a senior network security engineer in the cybersecurity space, and it's been absolutely amazing. But my journey didn't start off jumping into a very specialist role. And that is where my first learning comes in. And that is when I finished college, fresh with a degree in my hand, I was pretty excited and at the same time had very high expectations that I want to be working at XYZ FANG level companies. And trust me, that is probably everyone's dream is to, you know, work at one of the most reputed organizations in the world, like your Googles, your Amazons, Microsofts, Facebooks, etc. And I did my degree in networks and security. And look, obviously I'll be looking for a network engineer or a network security engineer role, but life had other plans. And after months and months of searching for jobs, handling rejections, countless of those unfortunately, you know, we've selected someone else, those kind of emails. I was pretty heartbroken. And that is when I started applying to more lower level roles, which includes working at the help desk. Now, some of you may hear help desk and think, hey, wait a second, I don't want to be there answering calls and catering to people's queries. But trust me, if you get an opportunity to work at the help desk and your end goal is to be a network engineer or a cybersecurity engineer, or for that matter, anything in IT, that is going to be your golden ticket. For example, for someone like me, who was an international student, getting that help desk experience proved to be priceless because it helped me get into the industry as an official entry point. And once I was in there, trust me, I learned a lot. Troubleshooting low level tickets, as well as collaborating with senior engineers and just learning from them, looking at their processes, seeing how businesses operate, seeing how technical teams function was invaluable. Hence, when you get an opportunity to work, just take it up. Yes, I know you may not be happy with the salary. You may not be happy with the work you're doing, but sometimes what's more important is just getting in. Once you get your foot in the door, you can then force yourself in. But before we proceed with the rest of this video, I would like to thank our sponsors for this video, which is Sevala. So Sevala is an all-in-one platform as a service that allows you to deploy apps, static sites, or even full databases. And that too, without any crazy limits or pricing tiers. It's pretty straightforward when you want to sign up to Sevala. You just go to their website and they also offer you a $50 credit when you first join them. So once you sign up and log into the dashboard, you can see it's pretty intuitive. You've got all of these different options for static sites, applications, databases, different types of templates, etc. And this is great for someone with little to no coding experience, especially being from cybersecurity. So let's quickly have a look. All you do is you just go to templates. Once you're there, you go to WordPress and you just hit on deploy. Once you do that, all it takes is a few minutes for your website to then be live. There's also a logging feature so you can see live logs as your website is being developed and hosted. And as you see, it's so simple. Within a few minutes, I've got a fully functional public URL and my WordPress website up and running. And what's the best thing about Sevala is that everything is in one dashboard, all managed automatically. And because it runs on Kubernetes and it also leverages Cloudflare's global network, you can get all of that performance within Sevala. And security wise as well, it's backed by Kinsta, which means you've got GDPR, ISO 27001, etc. All of these built in. But what's the best thing that I like about Sevala is the transparency. There are no hidden fees, no artificial limits. Everything is for face value. Whatever is there, that is the truth. So if you're someone who's looking for cloud deployment, or let's say you're someone like me who has not a lot of coding experience and wants to have your own personal cybersecurity portfolio, then do check Sevala out. The link is going to be in the description. You can sign up and um, yep. Yeah, Give them a try. Funny enough now, the second learning is directly connected to the first one, which as I spoke, right, I was fixated on working for like one of those fang level companies. And look, that dream sort of never goes away because think about the pride on your parents' face or, you know, your friends talking about, oh, this person's working at Google or Microsoft. It feels great, isn't it? And it was around that time as well when I got interviewed by one of the biggest companies in the world being Amazon. And um, I was super excited, super gassed for the opportunity. And what happened was on the final round, I failed. And at the time, that was like a major, major, major failure for me to handle. It was my dream company with my dream role being a network development engineer. I felt as though the world had come crashing down. And I closed myself in a room, sitting there for a few days, just completely demotivated, not wanting to go outside, find another job, or, you know, just that motivation that dies inside of you. I was pretty much going through the same motions. And this is where my second learning comes in. I got a job as a network engineer, but this time at a small to medium sized company in Melbourne, Australia. 
but the amount that i learned in two years of working at that company was immeasurable yes it wasn't a big name i wasn't working on cutting edge technology but the amount of freedom that i had to um incorporate things i wanted to do my ideas have that freedom you know sometimes in a technical role you need to have that freedom so that you can express yourself and that is exactly what a small to medium sized company is going to give you so don't be chasing fang level companies or big multinationals if you get a chance at a small company take it up with the idea that you get that freedom to then learn things by yourself incorporate those things in production environments one such example would be i got to drive a lot of projects involving email server migrations setting up virtualization something that was never there at the company before and what that did was it gave me that experience as well that probably i wouldn't have got at a multinational because one thing working for big companies is that a lot of things are process driven and it's very hard to then break that process and learn stuff on your own and that's exactly what you can do at a small to medium sized company now having spoken about a failure of mine where i wasn't able to clear my dream job interview let's speak about some of the good things that i did and that is where learning number 3 comes in i didn't focus too much on narrowing down on a niche first rather i focused more on broadening my skill set i remember at the time when i just started in the industry cloud engineering was a very big thing and that's where i decided that you know what i don't want to just go in saying i want to be a network engineer or i want to be a network security engineer rather i try to upskill myself and keep my skill sets broad as well what i mean by this is is that sometimes in information technology because everything is rapidly evolving you've got to keep yourself open to different options like today you have a lot of artificial intelligence being thrown around and trust me i'm already upskilling and learning the artificial intelligence side of things and how it integrates within cybersecurity similarly at the time it was cloud engineering and i did a couple of certifications in the cloud engineering space and that helped me in the long run it opened certain doors which your traditional networking or cybersecurity certifications at the time would not and the fourth learning now which is pretty controversial and will probably divide opinions is that initially in your career like the first Two to three years. Try not to focus on loyalty. I mean, I'm not saying be disloyal or you know um, do all of that stuff. Rather, know when it's the right time to leave a role or leave a company, so that you can then develop yourself and climb the ladder. Most of the times, what people do is they get a role and they just sit there, get too comfortable. There's not a lot of learning. There's not a lot of growth, and without you even knowing it. you kind of stuck in that loop and this is where me switching jobs every year year and a half at least for the first 3 to 4 years proved to be beneficial for me because it helped me climb that ladder but look there's a right way of doing it which is once you're done let's say learning all of the stuff that you can learn within that environment or within that company from a technical perspective or even a non technical perspective however comfortable you are you've got to tell yourself that it's time to move on challenge yourself look for better roles look for bigger roles and take that leap of faith sometimes it may work sometimes it may not work but these experiences that you gather early in your career then set the foundation for the next 10 to 15 years and learning number 5 is don't be too focused on only the technical side of things when i initially started off my career i always sort of thought technical understanding or technical knowledge or you know the technical implementation of things is probably the most important thing in a job role and that was one of the biggest sort of eye openers that i had which was it's completely false Yes, you have to be technically strong to get a role. Your interview is based on technical stuff. For example, like let's say in network engineering or cyber security, you've got to know the basics of networking, the basics of cyber security. You've got to have your certifications like the CCNA, CompTIA Security Plus, uh, Network Plus, all of that stuff. Yes, great, amazing. But what helps you grow within a role is your collaborative skills, your soft skills. What I mean by collaborative skills is being able to work in a team, work with colleagues. cross departments within your department uh, dealing with multiple stakeholders how you speak to them something as simple as email etiquette being able to explain stuff what you want to explain in emails how you communicate what you want to communicate let's say if there are some senior stakeholders for example you don't want to go up to them and speak a lot of technical jargon they're not just they just not going to understand it rather you've got to know how to speak to whom and that goes a very very long way when you want to then build and develop yourself within this domain and possibly out of the five things that i've mentioned this is the most important thing the first four learnings were more towards okay building a base building a foundation but this is where you can actually accelerate and then take that real next step in your career and i know i've already spoken about five learnings but i can't end this video without speaking about burnout in information technology as they say right burnout is a real thing know when to stop know when to take breaks know when to take it slow take care of yourself take care of your mental health your physical health make sure you exercise regularly you are constantly moving because in IT cybersecurity we are all working desk jobs 
So just being able to, you know, spend an hour a day or at least um, three to four times a week that you exercise of some sort, that is absolutely essential so that it helps prevent burnout and it also keeps you fresher so that you can have a longer and a lasting career. So yeah, these were my learnings being five years into the domain and also almost turning 30 next year. I'm really looking forward to what the next five or the next 10 years have in store. If you like this video, I'd really like you to hit the like button, drop a comment what you think about the things I've discussed. If you've got any other points, please add them. People over 30 who've spent like, let's say, five years in the domain, you can comment if you want to give any advices to our younger folks who are just starting out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.